Hi, welcome to another edition of In Conversation. Today I'm in conversation with Alfresco, and I'm joined with George from Alfresco. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Uh, let's just get right to it. Please tell me a little bit about your company and what you guys do. Uh, absolutely. So my name is George Parapadakis. I work for Alfresco. I'm a, a strategy, a solution strategy uh, director. Uh, Alfresco as a company has been around as an open source company for a while. Um, we, we help customers uh, develop solutions fast for digital transformation, particularly in the areas of information management and process operations management, operations efficiency. Uh, through that, we also support them in terms of governance and compliance, which is where GDPR uh, comes into the conversation. But ironically, it's not just for compliance purposes, it affects all the parts of our platform in terms of how do you manage information, how do you manage the operations around GDPR, and how do you demonstrate your compliance to regulators. Wow. So, it, I mean, that makes so much sense having compliance, security, and process together, especially with GDPR. So, uh, what are some of the challenges that you're hearing from your customers around GDPR compliance? Uh, Conversation varies depending on where in the journey the customers are. I think most of the customers are fairly comfortable that they have ticked the right boxes to um, at least demonstrate to a regulator that they, they have made an attempt at being compliant. Uh, where they are now is the next stage of the journey to say, how can we stay compliant? How can we stay on top of it? It's going to be an ongoing problem. It's not a one-off tick box exercise, we, you can't just write the policy and that's done. You need to be able to demonstrate both to your customers and to your regulators that it's an ongoing commitment and that you're honoring it. Different customers in different parts of the world and different industries have different levels of maturity. People who had traditionally a very strong data protection governance in their country had a smaller leap to do to get GDPR compliant. Uh, the ones that came from a more loose definition of data protection and not enforced uh, had a bigger, bigger journey to take them where they are today. I think they are all waiting for the market to mature. They're waiting to see the first instances of how the regulators will respond to uh, incidents, to breaches, how, how much traffic they're going to get from requests from individuals to manage their data. It, it's all a whole number of un unknowns, so it's very difficult to do a risk assessed view of what has priority from a GDPR. So there's a little bit of a wait and see game, but at the same time, uh, they have realized that it's not something they can ignore and it has started to become part of their, uh, their ecosystem in terms of how they manage information. Uh, that's very consistent with what I've been seeing as well. And I agree that harmonization of, of all of these different privacy laws and regulations and so on, I think is super important. Uh, so that we have like sort of one bar for everybody to try to meet. Um, and and in, on that point, it's interesting that you see now other areas outside Europe starting to look at it and seeing how they can get their data privacy to a similar level of, uh, of support as, as they have in Europe. So it obviously resonated with other, a lot of other regimes as well. Yeah, and it makes so much sense because you don't want privacy regulation to be a drag on like an entire economy. And so making sure that you're meeting that high bar will make it easier for you to do business with companies in the EU or at least collect data for EU residents right. and citizens and so and, on. And in reality, there's very few organizations around the world from you know the US to China that don't deal with EU citizens and EU citizens' data. There's very few companies that are really isolated within their own region. We have a globalization that's going on. So uh, the question is how fast and how aware these organizations outside Europe are with the criticality of managing European citizens' data. So I think that will show probably in the next three to five years um, when we'll see the regulators, regulations starting to challenge some of these companies to see how they respond to it. So how do you think cloud helps these companies get to GDPR compliance and that process that you talked about? How, how does cloud help uh, organizations? So cloud, cloud um, as a whole has, has helped in two slightly different areas. One is that it takes the burden of securing and protecting the data 
um, away. It allows you to hand that responsibility to a cloud provider who can guarantee a certain level of compliance around the, the preservation of the data, the protection of the data, the, the availability of the data. What it doesn't do, it doesn't absolve them from the responsibilities that are above that level. So as a company, you still have to look after um, what data you put in a cloud system. Where did you get that data from? What capabilities do you have to respond to requests around that data? So the cloud is not going to solve that for, for customers. However, it's one worry less around their infrastructure. But what it also allows them to do is as they get into discovering the data sources that they have in-house, which they have ignored for a long time, especially around shared file systems and um, servers that have been moved around through acquisitions and nobody's around that knows anymore what data is kept, they start to analyze that. As they start to analyze it, they start adding value and cleaning up the data that's no longer there. That's an opportunity for them to transition that payload into a cloud environment where it can be managed at much lower cost. So it allows them to combine the two processes and justifies the investment into doing the cloud transition that they have been wanting to do, but there was no uh, core incentive or core budget to do before. GDPR gives them another um, step up the ladder of making the move to the cloud. So it, it helps with that transition, it helps minimize the costs. It doesn't absolve them of the responsibility of actually doing GDPR.